Ok, so let's talk about Zig. Despite it being almost 10 years old, Zig is just now hitting that point where it's not just a hobby project and big companies are actually using it in production. The language has one very blunt goal. It wants to replace C and promises to do so without all the headaches of systems design programming. Zig gives you the same low-level control, but with clear explicit rules, modern safety checks, a powerful compiler that actually keeps you on the right track, and a handful of dev experience goodies, which makes low-level programming actually accessible even to pretty much anybody who's not a vibe coder. So let's start by reviewing five of Zig's most important selling points. Then we'll look at what coding in Zig actually feels like, and we'll wrap up the video with a practical example. Of course, just like any other serious low-level programming language, Z comes packed with a powerful type system. The system is designed to make every choice in your code explicit, so you don't get hidden conversions or magic behavior that you didn't ask for. There's no implicit casting between types, so if you want to turn a 32-bit integer into a 64-bit integer or a signed into an unsigned value, you have to explicitly say so. One of Zig's real strengths is his design by contract philosophy, where you spend less time writing repetitive null or error checks and more time expressing correct assumptions in the function signature. As a result, Zig uses an error union type that forces you to acknowledge and handle possible failures right in the type signature. It also treats nullability differently than most languages, and the value that might be null is its own distinct type. Generics exist, but they are resolved at compile time using compile time code execution rather than traditional templates or macros. That means the compiler can reason about your generic code just as well as it can about non-generic code. And I mention compile time code execution because this is one of Zig's best features. Comtime is a core part of how the language works and it lets you run actual code during compilation, generate types, perform calculations, or even produce specialized versions of functions without resorting to ugly macros or external code generators. At Comtime, you can run loops, call functions, and even interact with the type system while the program is still being compiled. The result is that a lot of problems that would normally require runtime logic can be moved to compile time, which gives you both speed and safety. And, because it's the same language running at compile time and runtime, there's no mental context switch. You don't have to learn a separate macro language, like in Rust, or deal with preprocessor hacks like in C. But, memory management is where Zig actually shines, because it manages to give you full control without dragging you into the usual C-style pointer chaos. When a programming language manages its memory, there are two main approaches. First, it can employ an automatic memory management strategy, like garbage collection or reference counting. Programmers don't have to worry about memory allocation or deallocation, but this comes at the cost of unpredictability, since garbage collection is non-deterministic, so you can't control when the next memory cleaning cycle will be triggered. As a result, garbage collection is a tool mostly used by higher-level languages, but Go is famous for being a low-level language that still uses GC. However, you really need fully deterministic outcomes, especially in lower-level programming, and languages like Rust came up with constructs such as the ownership model or the borrow checker to achieve that. But if you don't want to worry about any of these problems in your language, you can simply defer memory management entirely to the programmer. This is the C way, where you call malloc when you need memory, and you forget to call free when you're done with it. This gives programmers complete control with no safety net, which is why C has both legendary performance and a long history of catastrophic bugs. Zig falls into this manual category, but it refines the process by introducing allocators as first-class values. Instead of scattering raw allocations all over your code, you pass an allocator into the functions or data structures that need memory. That allocator could be the general purpose heap, a fast arena allocator, a fixed size buffer, or something completely custom. The important thing is, you choose it, you control it, and you know exactly when memory is being allocated and freed. And, since we are talking about safety, Zig's error handling is another key feature. What's interesting is that Zig doesn't have exceptions. Instead, it uses a simple but strict model. Errors are values. Functions that can fail return an error union type, which explicitly says that the function either returns a value of type t or one of these specific errors. When you call such a function, you can't ignore the possibility of failure because the compiler forces you to handle it. So you can either use a try statement to propagate the error up the call stack or a catch to deal with it right there. This makes error handling explicit in both the function's definition and every place where it's called. Finally, cross-compilation is built into the language so you can target different operating systems, CPU architectures, and even specific hardware features without leaving the Z compiler. This is possible because Zig comes bundled with its own C compiler built on LLVM, which can also act as a drop-in replacement for C-Lang. 
That means you can use Zig not just to compile Zig code, but also to build and cross-compile C and C++ projects with the same simplicity. Ok, enough with the theory, let's write some code. We'll start by defining the main function which is the entry point into our program. Note that the response type signals that main may fail and that failures propagate through the void error union. Zig comes packed with a powerful standard library, so let's import it at the beginning of the file and then print out a hello message to the screen. To take things one step further, we can extract the greeting and the name into two immutable byte slices and then pass them over to the print method as a tuple. There are two things worth mentioning here. First, in Zig, there is no built-in string type like in higher level languages. Instead, strings are represented as slices of bytes which can be either mutable or immutable. To be more exact, the square brackets denote a slice, which is a pointer to an array with a known length at runtime. const makes the value immutable, and u8 is an unsigned 8-bit integer. These string literals live in read-only memory and involve no heap work. Second, Zig offers an easy way to create anonymous struct literals, which are a compile time construct that groups values together without defining a name struct type. Zig structs are similar to the ones offered by C, but they are enhanced with modern features like compile time reflection, type safety and integration with Zig's explicit memory model. Next, let's expand this example into a more practical program that demonstrates Zig's type system, error handling, memory management and come time features. We'll create a function that concatenates a greeting and name, handles potential errors and uses an allocator for dynamic memory. We'll also add a come time check to ensure the greeting isn't empty. We'll first define a list of possible errors to let the compiler know what are the only ways our concat function can fail. The function takes an allocator as the first parameter so that the caller can divide where the memory comes from. Then, we check if any of the past string literals is empty and if no error is returned, we'll calculate the length of the final result. Once we know the exact size, we ask the allocator for that much memory. If that fails, the function will exit with the out-of-memory error. If we do get the memory, we copy the greeting first using a special built-in function, write the comma right after it, copy the name, then put an exclamation point at the end. Finally, we return the whole new string to whoever called us. Now, in the main function, we set up a general purpose allocator and we make sure it's cleaned up when the program ends using defer. Then, we set two constants, greeting and name, just like before. If the concatenate function fails, catch will handle all the possible errors. If everything works, we have to free the memory we just allocated, but keep in mind, we have to use defer so it happens automatically at the right moment. One important thing to mention is that despite being used in production, Zig is still far from a stable version 1 release. This means that you'll run into undocumented issues, deprecated examples and syntax that's not supported anymore. However, playing around with new languages and different ideas is always a good exercise. Please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel and, until next time, thank you for watching.